Welcome back in, everybody. Dynasty lunch break. This is our second one. This is our second one. Last week, huge success. Uh, that's, I mean, literally just coming from me. So, I mean, other people might tell you it was terrible. But from what I saw and the engagement, the the conversation, everything flowed. We only had minor technical difficulties. I mean, that's about all you can ever ask for in a live stream, right? Minor technical difficulties, people hanging out, having a good time, talking fantasy football. So we are back today, and honestly, I couldn't be more excited. I really couldn't be more excited. Uh, lots to discuss, lots to cover today. Uh, have a little game. Have a little game that I want to discuss with everybody, play with everybody. It's in honor of March Madness. Now, I know some of you guys are big March Madness fans, and if that's the case, I'm with you. Like, the second this is over, I'll probably go and watch March Madness. So, I know some of you have the Michigan State game that will be on here in a little bit. Some of you will be watching. Do, do both at the same time. Do both at the same time. There's no reason that you can't do both. And so, watch both. Watch watch me. Hang out with me. Talk. Let's hang out. Have a good time. And then, then you can give your full focus to March Madness when it's over. But just give, like partial focus uh so far uh somebody asked in ryan's asking is he the only one not getting sound uh let me see uh okay other people are getting sound is it a little bit longer on the top than normal yeah i I probably need a haircut it is it is getting a tad on the long side uh i cleaned up the beard so the, the beard's nice and clean at the moment but uh but yeah it's uh it's a little longer on top than normal. So yeah. Appreciate it, Peter. Uh Nick has a question for us. Nick's question is oh whoops. I have the wrong. See, I said only minor technical difficulties and then I messed something up. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. All right, I think I got the right. Yes, I got the right tab up. Okay. One quarterback league, I have the 108. Would it be worth it to trade that pick and my 25 first for the 104? I expect Odunze to be available. I just don't know if the bum is worth giving up the capital. All right, so in a one quarterback, 108 is is an incredibly different tier. Giving up your first this year and 108 is a lot to give up. All of that being said, it'll depend on where you think you're going to be this year. If you think you're going to be a contending team and that pick is 110, 111, 112, then I think it's absolutely worth it. If you're not sure that you're a legit contending team, that's probably going to be too high of a pick to give up. So I think it all depends on where you are at. Uh, Volume is just a little low, but I can't hear you. Okay. Volume's a little low. We'll see. We'll see if we we can get this thing turned up a little bit uh jacob says hey any idea when you guys could do a nerd herd podcast episode on your nerd score process so we've talked about breaking down some players some breaking sound some tape uh live in the discord so if you are not a dynasty nerds member and you're not in that discord we have some big things that we plan on doing uh moving forward with the the uh with the discord and we even did like a mini sample last week where Jared and I just hopped in for like 10, 15 minutes and we're just talking, goofing around for a second. But it will be similar to this, but even more laid back. Like it will literally, there will be no script. We'll just sit down and talk about prospects. But as far as like formally going over the nerd herd or the nerd uh, score process, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good answer on that because there are some things that we want to reveal and share with you guys. There's other things that we got to kind of keep hitting behind the curtain. We don't want to give away too many of our formulas and processes and things like that to where somebody could easily replicate it. Not that it's impossible to figure out and, and uh, you know, kind of backtrack and figure it out, but we, we, we want to be able to be as transparent as we're able to be. And so I'll have to talk with Jared and see how much we can, give away and how much we can't 
All right. Uh, Cody says, I have 108 in a one QB league. I'm looking to buy someone with that pick, preferably a wide receiver. Any targets you can think of. I've tried JSN in London before the Kirk signing and no bites. So at 108, uh, he said he has 106 as well, willing to do the same with that pick. Uh, so at 108, you're probably looking at let me pull up let me pull up my personal rankings here. You said that London and JSN were already a no go. Um, let me grab my rankings here. So other potential targets that I think might be worthwhile: T Higgins might be worthwhile there. Nico Collins might be worthwhile there. Um, it depends if you're a contender, there's some older guys you could target and maybe it's like 108 and you get, uh, or sorry, you get like, you give up one. No, no, no. You have 108. So you give up 108 and you get back like Stefan Diggs and 201 or something like that. Like I would be maybe willing to do something like that. Uh, tank Dell would be somebody else that I would be interested in. I think you could even get something back from 108 for Deontay Johnson. I think Deontay Johnson might have a really big gear. So those are those are some names that that I would kind of consider there. All right. Uh Superflex Titan Premium Josh Allen owner wants Kyler and 102. I have Stroud, Kyler, and Tua as well as Cousins. Is Allen worth that? So basically you're giving up Kyler and Probably Daniels, but for some people, we're also looking at Drake May at that point. If those are the two guys that you are giving up, I think it is probably worth it. Allen has been consistently a top two or three quarterback several years as the number one overall quarterback. And as much as I like those guys, Kyler's been hurt a lot, and nothing is a sure thing uh, with, with these rookie picks. And so long run could the Kyler side end up being more valuable. Yes. But the Kyler side could also easily fall on its face. Whereas the Allen side, you feel with probably 98, 99% certainty that you're going to walk away very happy. Even if the other side gets a slightly higher value, you know that you're not getting hosed. So I would probably be, be willing to do that. Uh, Andrew says, I have an interesting draft strategy. Curious on your thoughts. I've been drafting Every other year, for example, in 2020, I drafted and in 2021, I traded all my picks for 22 and lets me and it lets me normally have more picks and hasn't hurt me yet. Just curious on your thoughts. I've been doing it for about six years or so. Uh, I have no issue with that. I don't know that I would necessarily be locked into that type of strategy where I felt like I had to do that every year. But you're right. The cheapest you're ever going to get picks is a year out, two years out. Like that's the cheapest you're ever going to be able to get picks. And they always increase in value. Very, very almost never do they decrease in value. It would have to be just a truly horrific class for those picks to lose value. You're almost always going to gain value. So with that, I never have a problem trading for future picks as long as your team can withstand that. You know, if you're in a rebuild, obviously they can. Uh, but it, when you have to wait that long to get these assets, you're you're def you're deferring that that possibility of those guys developing and being key parts of your team. So as long as your team can afford that, I have no issue doing that. All right, let's get into. Uh, oh, so Jacob says you just like to learn how to do his own scores. Yeah. We could probably we could probably do something like that um, because our process isn't overly complicated. Um, so while we couldn't give out necessarily the exact formulas that we use to calculate the scores, we could kind of tell you what we're looking for, what we do, and then how you could do something very similar to it. Um, all right, last one, and then I want to get to uh, I want to get to our game. Because I have a, a fun little game that I'm excited about playing with you guys that is centered around the season, trying to, to embrace the seasonality of March Madness. I love March Madness.
March Madness personally. I think it's one of the best times of year, even though I'm a football guy through and through. It is truly an incredible tournament. So much fun to watch. So much fun to have brackets and wagers and you know all these different things. So really, really excited uh, about that. Uh, so last one here. According to Dynasty GM, I'm the favorite by 10,000 points. I have the 103 and 202. My QBs are Mahomes, A. Rich, and Geno. Starting wide receivers are A.J. Brown, J.S.N., and Reed. Should I take the value in quarterback or more of the need at wide receiver? Uh, super flex as well. Sorry. Uh, at 103, I think that's a perfect range for Marvin Harrison Jr. I think you can easily make the argument as high as two. Uh, and I'm always big proponent of the best available player. But he legitimately might be the best available player even at 103 despite the value of the quarterback. So totally cool with doing that. All right. So this game we're going to play. I need lots of people that are watching. I need you guys to give your input so that way we can decide how to move forward with our fantasy football March Madness bracket. All right, one more. West Coast just hopped in. I got I got to answer real quick. 12 team super flex PPR Herbert and a 25 first from a playoff team or love in London roster is Hertz Herbert dimes hall a chain Henry JJ chase Olave 109 and 110. Um, I'm not the biggest love guy personally. So for me, Herbert, there's enough of a gap there between Herbert and London to make up for the gap between London and and the first and 25. So I would probably personally be going with the Herbert side, but very, very close. London is a very appealing asset in 2025. All right. Or 2024. Uh, Josh says, agree with Peter, beautiful hair. Uh, that's what he said, right? <laughs> that is true. All right. Let's get to our little activity here. And let me pull this off to the side. We have what I created as my own little a little March Madness bracket here. Uh, let me know if you guys can't see that for some reason. I think it should be coming through just fine. But uh, I created my own, own little March Madness bracket here. Now, I made it a little smaller, so some things got a little bit cut off. But uh, you should be able to tell pretty easily what's going on here. I created a combo of quarterback running back and wide receiver on each team. All right. So I created a quarterback running back and wide receiver for each team. So with that, I need your guys's help to decide who should move on to each round. So here's our contenders. We have an eight team tournament and don't look into the seedings too much random seedings. I just needed them to, to be able to move forward. So the first one, we have Caleb Williams. We have Travis Etienne, and we have Justin Jefferson. All right, Caleb Williams, Travis Etienne, Justin Jefferson. At the eight seed, we have Anthony Richardson, Kyron Williams, and CeeDee Lamb. Uh, at the five seed, we've got Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A.J. Brown. At the four seed, we've got Dak Prescott, CMC, and Jamar Chase. Josh says this is cool. I appreciate it. I think, I think it's pretty cool, too. Uh, Patrick Mahomes at the two seed, along with Jonathan Taylor and DK Metcalf. On the seven seed, we have Burrow, Brees, and Waddle. Uh, on the six seed, we have Gibbs, along with CJ Stroud and Amon Ross St. Brown. And the three seed, we've got Allen, A-Chan, and Pittman. So let's start with the 1-8 matchup. Start with the 1-8 matchup here. And who would you rather have between these two trios? Caleb Williams, Travis Etienne, Justin Jefferson, or Anthony Richardson, Kyron Williams, and C.D. Lamb. So with this, as you guys, as we're getting the responses in, uh, I see one vote for Team 8. One vote so far for Team 8. You have the rookie quarterback. He's the only rookie in this. So there's a little, little extra... Uh, there as far as risk with the rookie uh, you have Travis Etienne and you have Justin Jefferson arguably the, the best wide receiver in football and for fantasy football but did look did lose Kirk Cousins did lose Kirk Cousins so uh, that can be tough Anthony Richardson 
a lot of risk in his own right, along with Kyron Williams, who had a great year last year, and C.D. Lamb. So, so far, I am seeing one, two, three, four votes for Team 8, and three votes for Team 1. So, very, very close so far. Keep getting those votes in. We've got another one for 8, so five on Team 8. This is re- this is really close. I thought this was a tough matchup heading right away. I was hoping it wouldn't just be like everyone picking one team because clearly I'm off in my evaluation of somebody. But uh, with it being this close, clearly uh, clearly a tough matchup. I think you know Justin Jefferson and Ceedee Lamb. I think are very close. So I think what it comes down to is where do you see the potential of Anthony Richardson versus where you see the potential of Caleb Williams both sky high ceilings right one a little more injury risk one we've just not seen play at all at the NFL level so it's it's really close Kyron Williams Travis Etienne I have Kyron over Etienne but I know some people like Etienne over Kyron so it's 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 pretty darn close uh Nick said wow I think a rich does what he did last year. Uh, many more seasons to come. Ooh. He said, uh, B Different says, changing my vote to eight because ETN and JJ quarterback situation. AR dual threat gives the edge to eight. I'm seeing more eights, especially with one of the ones being changed. Oh, Ryan, Ryan went with one. Eli went with eight. I'm seeing enough eights at this point. I think we're going to go with team eight. We'll move on team eight to the next round. All right. Next one. Let's go. Uh, we'll go down the bracket. Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A. J. Brown. Would you rather have that trio or would you rather have Dak Prescott? CMC and Jamar Chase. Obviously, you're a little bit younger on Team 5 side, but you've got some league winners there in Jamar Chase, CMC, and Dak Prescott was was a top, what was he, was quarterback three or four this year? He was one of the top quarterbacks. So it could be pretty close. So let's, let's get our votes in on this one. You're going with more overall the youth side. Uh, of Team 5. Obviously, A.J. Brown's a little bit older than Jamar Chase, but you have more youth on the side of Team 5 or going for maybe a slightly more win-now team. I know people are down a little bit on Herbert after losing Keenan Allen, losing Mike Williams this year, who's he going to be throwing the football to, but obviously he's got crazy, crazy upside. So another one that's close so far. I'm I'm seeing it back and forth, back and forth. We've got one, two, three, four votes for five. We've got one, two, three, four votes for four. Uh, I mean, we're literally split down the middle at the moment. And this this might legitimately be more of your, your style. Are you somebody that is trying to build more of a long-term dynasty? Or are you somebody that's, that's trying to win right now? Because I think... Team four gives you that slight edge on that win right now with CMC, somebody like that. Uh, ZK Gamer said, sad. Uh, Chargers leaving my guy Herbert out to dry. Sad to see my main quarterback. Start needing to see a little bit more five than four. A little bit more five than four. But, man, it's close. Still very close. We've got another vote for five and two more votes for five. Another vote for four. Jacob saying people hate Dak for no other reason than he chokes in playoff games and his cowboy dude had a great year last year. That's true. He did have a really good year last year. So this is a, uh, this is a tough call. This is a tough call. Uh, another vote for four. man. We are back and forth. All right. I got to count up these votes. Mr. Bakes a lot. What's up? Good to see you. We are playing a March Madness game right now. We are on the 5-4 matchup between Justin Herbert, A.J. Brown, and B. John Robinson. 
versus Dak Prescott, CMC, and Jamar Chase. Who would you rather have as the trio on your dynasty team? These are all super flex. We're assuming super flex on all of these. All right. So let me let me try to get these added up. Okay. For five votes, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. Eight there for five. On four, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Wait, I lost count. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, four, five, six. I've got six for four. Mr. Bakes a lot throwing in a number four man. So we've got seven and eight. Is that really what our votes are down to seven and eight? I'm going to need a few more votes to come in. I don't feel cool. I don't feel good calling this just yet. This is a really tight race between these two. And I think that's this is really it really is what it comes down to. Are you somebody that's like, look, I don't care if it's a startup, I don't care what it is. Give me my best chance to win every year. And Team Four gives you that. Team Four gives you your best chance. But if you want to build a dynasty, I mean, if if Herbert gets some weapons, things work out with Harbaugh, Bijan, we know he can be that guy. And AJ Brown, he's he's proven it year in and year out that he's a legitimate wide receiver one. Uh so uh, it's tough. If I don't get any more votes, five is the one that's winning right now. And Nick asked, does Herbert fall a lot with the new coaching staff and no wide receivers? And I think you can make that argument that he that he does fall a little bit. For dynasty purposes, he hasn't really fallen much in my ranks. He fell one spot. Because this year is part of it, but long-term has a part of it as well. And long-term, I think his future is still very, very bright. So I'll give it a little bit more. I think, I think we got to give it to five. I think you're right. Team five. We're going to give the edge to team five right now. So team five just made it through with Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and AJ Brown. All right, let's go back up to the top, but we are on the right-hand side right now. We've got, Patrick Mahomes, Jonathan Taylor, and DK Metcalf for our Superflex team. Or we got Joe Burrow, we've got Brees Hall, and we've got Jalen Waddle. Uh, Josh saying, are these actual trades off the Dynasty GM? No. Uh, these would be some legitimate big boy trades. Like, leg when we're talking big, like, all you need is one of these kinds of names in a trade for it to be a big boy trade. These are, woo. Like league altering type deals uh, that would be going down. So, all right. So let's get our votes in for team two, Patrick Mahomes, Jonathan Taylor, or DK Metcalf. Team seven, Joe Burrow, Brees Hall, and Jalen Waddle. And man, it's already close again. I mean, I'm, look, I don't want to brag, but I did put these together. So clearly I'm putting up some good matchups because this has been tight. We have three four votes for two three votes for team seven uh I, I think Patrick Mahomes is doing a lot of carrying uh on the team too even though Jonathan Taylor is is no no slouch at all and DK Metcalf's a fine wide receiver but that trio of young talented players young talented players uh on this team seven seven's tantalizing with that Seven's tantalizing. Brees Hall, number two running back uh, this past season. Jalen Waddle, he's been a little bit of a disappointment uh, since the addition of uh, Tyreek Hill. So he has been a little bit of a disappointment, but he's got a lot of upside. A lot, a lot of upside. A lot of years left in those legs as well. So we've got one, two, three, four votes for two. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So team seven up a little bit right now. Team seven up a little bit right now. 
Uh, Nick asking how I'm feeling about Hollywood Brown and KC. I love it. I, I love it. He he was actually, when we did the episode on free agency before it actually happened, and we were just talking about ideal landing spots, where we would like to see guys go, things like that. That was the spot that I had Hollywood Brown. I thought he could do some things that would make that offense more exciting, more dynamic. It's a really team-friendly deal. I mean, one year, $7 million, not a lot as far as what it costs people uh, in order to – or what it costs you know, the team in order to get him there. But if he has the kind of year that he ki- could have, I mean, whew, he could have an absolutely monster season. We're talking 90 receptions, 1,250 yards, and 10 tutties. Like, he could have an absolutely monster season. He's not Tyreek Hill, but he does offer that speed and things that he can do in the open field that this team has been missing a little bit. So, liking him quite a bit there. Jacob saying, Burrow gets banged up a little bit too much for him. That's why he went with team two. Uh, Seven for Eli. So, I mean... It looks like I got to go with Team 7. Decent amount of Team 2 votes. But I think the youth has one out in this one. So we're going with Team 7. Team 7. All right. Last matchup of the first round. We can get our votes in starting now. We've got CJ Stroud and then the real-life teammates of Jameer Gibbs and Amon Ross St. Brown. Another pretty young team there. Uh, But... We've got them going up against what is typically the quarterback one in Josh Allen, Devon H. Han, the young electric running back, and Michael Pittman Jr., who just newly newly minted big-time contract there in Indianapolis. So, Team 6, C.J. Stroud, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, or Team 3, Allen, H. Han, and Pittman. So, Matt, he's going with Team 3, Be different fitness, he said. In my honest opinion, Mahomes and Burrow uh, and DK over Waddle for now. Brees over JT, but not by much. Uh, So Matt is going with Team 3. Team 6 is going to uh, Mr. Bakes a lot. Josh is going with Team 3. Matt is going with Team 6. Ryan is going with Team 6. Another one split down the middle. No avalanches so far. No avalanches. These have all been pretty close matchups. Six is starting to pull away, though. We've got two more votes for Team Six. People are loving that youth. CJ Stroud showed a lot that rookie season, but the number one overall quarterback is tough to pass up. Number one overall quarterback. Jacob said it's not even close. Team Six, not even close. People are loving Gibbs, and I understand why. People are understanding. I understand why with Gibbs. A Chan's got that big upside too, though. He's got that big upside. More of a sure thing at quarterback. Uh, do you think A Chan can sustain a running back? Uh, be a, a sustain being a running back, or is he prone to injury? At that size, you do always have to be a little bit worried. But he's a legitimate football player. He held up decently well uh, during his time at Texas A and M, playing in the SEC. Uh, so. You're seeing a lot of NFL defenders that are playing in the SEC. So I'm not overly worried about it. It has to be a concern anytime you're at that size, uh, but I'm not overly concerned. Looks like six is starting to run away. Do we have anybody else that wants to come in and champion Team 3? They've only got two votes so far, and all we keep doing is getting more Team 6. So Team 6 is moving on. We've got C.J. Stroud. Jameer Gibbs and Amon Ra St. Brown. So now we're to the semis. Now we're to the semis. Look at the lower seed. The lower seed advanced in all of these, which I told you the seeding meant absolutely nothing. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But the lower seed moved on each and every time. Interesting. All right. Let's get to our 8 5 matchup here. We have Anthony Richardson. Kyron Williams, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, Bonzera, I think that's correct. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, 
We're voting here on which trio you would rather have, March Madness style, as the Michigan uh, Michigan State game is kicking off here for March Madness 2024. We've got our own little slice of madness here on the Dynasty Nerds YouTube page. So Anthony Richardson, Kyron Williams, CD Lamb with seed eight. We've got with seed five, Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A. J. Brown. Who would you rather have between those two teams? Seed eight, Anthony Richardson, Kyron Williams, CD Lamb, or seed five, Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A. J. Brown. Jacob Parker going back to the last one. Amon Ra's Mr. Consistent. Gibbs reminds me of how Kamara was in his prime, and Stroud could very well compete to be the top quarterback every single year. So, so far, two votes in on this one for five and eight. Uh, oh, we got more coming in. Still split down the middle, two and two. Nick's got us with a five. Jacob with an eight. Ryan with an eight. Uh, be different fitness with a five. Matt with a five. Uh, other Matt with a five. Powerfold says nine. So he's cheating. I'm assuming he meant eight, though. So we're going to say that's a vote for eight. Uh, ZK Gamer with the five. Back and forth, back and forth, back. It's like tennis. Been watching a little more tennis lately. Tennis, not as boring as I originally thought. All right? Not as boring. People sleep on tennis. Tennis is kind of fun. Team five by a lot, Josh said. Look, he said, don't even come in here with that teammate stuff. Give me... Team five, give me that Herbert, give me that Bijan, give me that AJ Brown. Mr. Bakes a lot agrees. He agrees. He wants that team five action. People are are people sleeping on getting CD Lamb, the number one overall wide receiver from last year, and on a points per game basis, the RB two and Kyron Williams. Matt says tennis is great. Welcome to the club. Yeah, look, I've had it on in the background while I've been working more lately. I low key kind of enjoy tennis. It's it's more exciting than I thought it was. Those guys are fantastic athletes. Don't hate tennis. Don't hate tennis. So Matt, I'm glad to be in the club. All right, five is starting to run away with it. Not seeing many more people come. Okay, so pickleball. I don't know how to play pickleball. It's I feel like it's been like sweeping the nation. Everybody's talking about pickleball, wanting to play it. I need to learn. Because I want to play. I want to be in, from what I've heard, is just like old man version of tennis. So I'm game. Sign me up. Put me on a team. Give me a headband. I'll make it happen. So I'm, I'm team pickleball, even though I have no clue what I'm doing. All right. Last call for votes. We've got team eight. A. Rich, Kyron Williams, CeeDee Lamb. We've got Team 5, Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A.J. Brown. Any last, any last ones? Any last ones? Any last votes? Going once? Going twice? There's probably a delay, so it doesn't really matter. Sold Team 5 into the championship. We've got Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A.J. Brown. All right, in our other semifinal matchup, we have Team 7. Go ahead and start getting those votes in. We've got Team 7. Both these teams are pretty young. Joe Burrow, Barrys Hall, Jalen Waddle. All right, Burrow, <laughs> Ryan said you five people are crazy. He's like, give me, give me Team 8. Hey, if A. Rich can be the guy that he potentially could be if he stays healthy, Team eight does look scary, but they're out of it for now. Uh, Burrow, Brees, and Waddle. Or give me CJ Stroud, Jameer Gibbs, and Amin Ra St. Brown. So you want those Lions there? Do you want that SEC team? Actually, I guess it's not. Uh, Brees Hall was in the Big 12. But you get the point. You get the point. Here we go. Team six. Ooh, I'm getting quite a bit of six. Matt's holding out hope. For team seven, he said, I like seven a little bit better with Burrow, Brees, and Waddle. Most people have Brees above Gibbs. Most people have Burrow ahead of Stroud. Most people have Amon Ra ahead of Waddle. 
Well, we're getting getting a little more seven defenders. A few more seven defenders out here. But six seems to be running away with it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine votes for team seven. And we've only got three for team, or sorry, nine votes for team six, three votes for team seven. So six looks like they might be running away with it. Last call for team six and seven. Uh, Josh says, these are hard. I need something easy on my brain at lunch. Look, I get it, man. I get it. You just wanted to relax, and I came in here with a difficult task, but you guys have stepped up to the plate. You guys have made it happen, and I'm very proud of each and every one of you for doing it. Uh, Nick said, I can't believe Joe Burrow is 27. Yeah, he came in as an older prospect. I think he was 23 his rookie season, so a little bit of an older prospect there at quarterback. Looks like we do not have enough. Seven defenders. So team six moving on to the championship round. All right. This leaves us with our final matchup. Both teams pretty young. Eli came in with that late seven. It wasn't enough, but I appreciate you coming in and giving us one more vote for team seven, but it ain't happening. We've got team six in the finals. Here we go. Would you rather have team five? Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A.J. Brown, or C.J. Sprout, Sprout, C.J. Stroud, Jameer Gibbs, and Amon Ross St. Brown. Go ahead and get your votes in. All right, we've got a five. We've got two sixes. Five and two sixes. Another six here. Stroud, Gibbs, Amon Ra. They're coming in strong. Ooh. Got four straight votes for team six. Team five, where you at? Who's there for Bijan? For Justin Herbert? For AJ Brown? Oh, man. People are loving team six. Loving team six. Five got the first vote. Hasn't got one. Oh, Matt came in with the five. Nick came in with the five. Do I smell a comeback? Do I smell a comeback? Bijan, Gibbs. Most people have Bijan over Gibbs, but it's close. Amon Ra and AJ Brown. Most people have Amon Ra higher, but once again, close. And then it really comes down to what do you think about Justin Herbert? Oh, the five defenders are coming in. Matt said five. Nick said five. Josh just said five. Six is too unproven yet to me. Is that weird? Mr. Bakes a lot says five. Ryan says five. Susan says five. Woo, we have a comeback in the championship game. Hold on. Let me count these votes. Still keep, keep bringing in the votes. Keep bringing in the votes because we need to figure this out. All right? So we have... Matt with five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five votes. Seven, five votes. And what we thought was going to be the runaway winner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six votes. Woo. Mr. Bakes a lot says six limits upside because having both players on the same team on your roster makes five a little bit better. Eli saying five, five. I think five just took the lead. I think five just took the lead after what looked like it was going to be a landslide. Six, number five was down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven votes. Seven votes to one. And five has come storming back. Maybe, maybe team six just has slightly faster internet. Maybe that's the difference. Uh, Nick said, also, if I'm on either side of this in real life, I prefer the side where the players are not sharing the same team. Uh, <laughs> Ryan said, I need to get in a league with five of you people. Let's start a lunch stream league. Love it. Love it. Ryan, I agree. Hey, I'm all for new leagues. And obviously, if you guys are here on your lunch break, there's lots of things you could be doing on your lunch break, like watching March Madness. You're hanging out with me. So 
perfect time to start a league. You know these people are invested. Uh, it'll be great. Nick Ryan, we will eat your lunch. Woo! Oh, man. The trash talk has already begun. I love it. Travis says people are really voting against Team Six because of two players on the same team. I see. For me, it doesn't phase me as much, especially since they are different positions. Both prove that they could be effective in the same game. But I get it. It does limit your upside on a week to week basis, but not on an overall season basis. Uh, so it doesn't phase me as much. But I'll be honest, both these teams are pretty sexy. If that's your core, you're pretty happy with the core of your team either way. Uh, team six is slightly younger, but it's not like team five is an old team at all. Uh, still a very young team. So, who? All right, any other votes before we crown a winner? I'm going to give another 30 seconds or so for people to come in and pick their side of this this uh this bracket here Gibbs is the pass catcher though right that's true Gibbs is a pass catcher it's a fair point uh Jacob saying be on the same team didn't stop him last year interesting interesting okay let me count the votes Try to get it again. Team five has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, seven for team six, or sorry, for team five. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven each. We are at a literal. We are at a literal standstill. Ryan said, I'm in a league with Rich already. Let's do it, Garrett. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I might. I can't do it right now. But let's see how let's see how this stream goes, because I might be willing to hop in a league with y'all. I mean, you guys are welcome to start a league either way. I just have a problem of jumping into too many leagues. And then I'm going to have to commission it. And I'll be honest. I don't love being a commissioner. I do it when I have to. But I don't love being a commissioner. So I'll think about it. I'll think about it. But you guys are welcome to make a league. Look, we need a tiebreaker. We need a tiebreaker. Seven to seven between Stroud, Gibbs, and Amon Ra. And seven for Justin Herbert, B. John Robinson, and A.J. Brown. Ryan said he will co-commish. There we go. By co-commish, you mean I'm going to be passing all the responsibilities to you. Just saying. It'll probably happen that way. All right. Mr. Bakeslaw says I got to be the tiebreaker. You guys putting this pressure on me on my own show. Making me be the tiebreaker. Uh, applaud the bracket when it comes down to a tiebreaker in the finals. Hell yeah, we need Garrett in the league. I'll be the commission. No worries. Sounds like Garrett's the tiebreaker. Okay. <sighs> Drum roll, please. Okay. I, after much consideration, I'm looking at both of these teams. Based on my rankings, I am going with Six. Team six is the champion. They came off to a fast lead, slowed down, but at the finish line, we got them over the top. Look, it's just so tight. Honestly, and, and I even said based on my rankings, I got to go look and make sure that's even true. Uh, I'm not a 100% sure that's even true. But Bijan, I, I do have Bijan over Gibbs, but it's not by a huge margin. But I think the the margin for Amon Ra over AJ Brown is slightly larger for me. 
And then it then it comes down to like Herbert and Stroud, and I have these guys almost identical, almost identical. Uh, so it it could truly, truly go either way. But yeah, I'm going, I'm going with six at the moment. Uh, it literally the tiebreaker for me right now is I know the situation with CJ Stroud and I like it. I just don't know how much they're going to run the ball uh, with, with Justin Herbert there and Jim Harbaugh. I don't know who he's passing to like, that's, that's the, the tiebreaker for me, but uh, I, I'm already sick over it. I'm like already second guessing in my brain who I should have taken, but man, it was very, very close. Uh, Nick says, would you give up AJ Brown for Malik neighbors? Uh, I probably would not at this point, not because I don't think Malik could be better. He could be, but we know AJ Brown is a top five, six dynasty wide receiver. We know that without a doubt. We hope Malik neighbors becomes a top five or six dynasty wide receiver. And I know you can argue age and I totally get that, but we've had this happen too many times where we've, we've loved a player. And it just doesn't quite pan out. Now, if you're giving me Marvin Harrison, I have them in different tiers personally. There's other people that don't. And there's other people that even have neighbors over top of of Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't get that personally, but there are people that do. And that's totally fine. And if you're one of those people, then it probably is worth it. But for me, I would still rather have AJ Brown, especially if I'm a contender. Especially if I'm a contender. All right, guys. Well, that was really fun. Uh, I'm going to have to put it out there on uh, into the Twitter sphere, uh, into the X sphere. Uh, that sounds a little different, but uh, I'll have to put it, this bracket out there, see what everyone thought of it, uh, see who they would rather have, uh, and uh, see see what we, we get there. Uh, I'm curious, though. We voted for five and six at the end. That doesn't mean that was everyone's favorite team. So of all of these teams, if you could just pick one, what team would you want? Which team would you want? Because I know that there were a lot of matchups in here that were very close and could have gone either. Like the very first matchup against team five and six was a tight one. was a tight one. So, I mean, team four could have easily ended up being in in the championship round. So who would you guys say was your favorite team? Of all the teams that you could possibly pick. Curious to see what you guys say. Uh, Touched a little bit last week on free agency. All of the news. All of the things that that happened and took place uh, overall there. Uh, Mr. Bakesalot saying Team 7 was his favorite. Uh, That's Burrow, Brees, Waddle. Uh, The A-Rich, Kyron, Lamb one uh, was the, the favorite over here for Ryan. So, yeah, two of the teams that didn't win. We're actually the favorite overall teams. Uh, let me put it up again. Yep. So here are the four teams that you could choose from. Or sorry, the eight teams that you could choose from. Uh, Josh said, I love team five. I think my pick is team four. So yeah, team four. Team four, where yeah, they didn't even make it out of the first round. And, I mean, that's that's a team that could win you a ship right now. Right now. Uh, free agency, like I said, we, we touched on a little bit last week. We didn't really talk much about the Russell Wilson situation. So, Russell Wilson gets a really cheap deal, but he, obviously he's getting paid a ton from Denver already. So, really cheap deal for Russell Wilson to go to Pittsburgh. But then all of a sudden there's a trade for Justin Fields to go to Pittsburgh as well. Sixth round pick could end up being as high as a fourth round pick, depending on how everything goes. And I've been asked a few times, like, what are my thoughts on the situation? And I think Russell Wilson is going to be the starter, at least to begin the year. And as much as I'm a Justin Fields guy, I think they're trying to see, do they have enough on defense And do they have enough at the skill positions? I'm assuming they're going to draft the wide receiver. Do they have enough to once again 
be a legitimate threat in the AFC. And I think Russell Wilson, in their mind, gives them that. But if they think that they're going to have to potentially go more of the rebuilding route, Justin Fields makes a lot of sense for them. So I think that that's why they made this deal to get both of these guys, both high upside guys, very low risk for the, I mean, if you're telling me that you only had to give up a little over a million dollars from one guy, sixth round pick at best, a fourth round pick for the other, that's a great deal. So I think Pittsburgh, what Pittsburgh did there makes a ton of sense, makes a ton of sense. Uh, more, more votes coming in. Uh, we've got another one for uh, team four and ZK gamer. Eli saying number seven was his favorite uh, team. Eight uh, was the favorite for Ryan. Jacob Parker said uh, they did win me a ship and said, I, except I had to CD lamb instead of chase. Love it. Susan says, I like three a lot. Pittman is going to have a good year. Pittman. Yeah. Pittman has a big year and look, a Chan. A Chan could have a monster year. If you're wanting to t- take a dark horse, to be the number one overall running back, it's it's Devon Achan. If things go well in that offense, he stays healthy and Mostert doesn't, which he hasn't for most of his career. <whistles> wild, wild the type of season that he could have. Matt says, what, uh, what would you give up to get fields right now? I don't need a quarterback, but it would be a buy low thought. Yeah, if somebody is just kind of frustrated and done, I would take him. I would probably take Justin Fields for a high second. If I could get Justin Fields for a high second, I don't think I'd be willing to give a first. That situation's too volatile at this point. But if I can get him for a high second, I think that's the range where I would would want to. Josh says, "Who starts in Las Vegas, though?" And I have a few buddies that have had a disagreement last night about it. Not that it really matters either way. I think at right. I think right now it's 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 got to be Gardner Minshew. They paid him enough money to be a starter. I'm not ruling out the f- possibility that they still bring in a rookie to compete. And if they, if it were to be a, a Michael Penix or somebody like that, could really absolutely give them a run for their money. Uh, Minshew's a good quarterback, but Penix is the real deal. And he's not a young pup either. He could come in right away and start. So... That, that would be a guy that I'd be scared of if I were Gardner Minshew because I don't think they're going to be able to get up into the top four guys. So then you're looking at Knicks, Penix, Spencer Rattler, like those types of guys as potential options. And Penix is the one for me that if he ends up getting an opportunity, I think I think he's so underrated. I think he's so, so underrated. Susan said Steelers stole those pieces this year. And she is not wrong. A great opportunity there uh, for the Steelers to really just get to see if they can figure out and make something work at quarterback for very, very cheap. Uh, other things that, that have happened since we talked last, uh, we had we, we touched a little bit already on the Marquise Hollywood Brown stuff. We did not, however, touch on what happened with the Chargers. So we, we alluded to it when we talked about Justin Herbert. Obviously, Justin Herbert. Good quarterback, but he just lost two big pieces uh, because of of the, the salary cap and, and the tough situation that the Chargers were in. So they cut Mike Williams, who ended up becoming a Jet, which I think is a great fit. I think that's going to be huge for Aaron Rodgers to have a deep threat, somebody over the top that they can make big plays. Garrett Wilson is going to feast in the, the short and intermediate routes. I think it's a hand-in-glove fit. I would not rule out them drafting a Brock Bowers, and all of a sudden – this is a ridiculous offense for Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers, another quarterback that's being a little slept on, that could have a monster, absolutely monster year. And I get it. In Dynasty, uh, it's not as appealing to get a guy like Aaron Rodgers. But I love taking guys that are over 33, ride them out for, you know, at that age, sometimes you can ride them out for a decade still if they're Tom Brady. But, but even just two, three, four years – Love doing that in Dynasty because those quarterbacks really lose a ton of value in a lot of people's eyes. Uh, Mr. Bakes a lot says, break down a rookie mock. Uh, we have enough people in here that would be down. Uh, we can definitely do that. I'm out of here in about five minutes. Uh, I got to get going. I got some stuff I got to finish up today. Uh, but that is absolutely something 
uh, that we can do. And maybe, maybe we'll even do it next week. Maybe we'll do, because uh, we did a mock draft last week, and uh, we, we could easily break that down uh, or break someone else's. Or maybe we even do another mock draft and break it down as we do it. So uh, absolutely a possibility. Uh, Matt says, I like it. I was thinking about offering Levis and Rudolph. Uh, for Fields in 208, he has 302. Do you think that's a fair offer? Yeah, I would want the Fields in 208 side. Uh, I get it. Will Love is probably the starting quarterback. I don't know how successful that's going to be, though. Uh, Ryan says, as a Michigan fan, you're the first person saying what I've been saying on a rookie draft. Uh, Corum and McCarthy are likely products of that offensive line. Both good players, but are going to be over-drafted. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. That's tough as a, a person that is a fan of a team to be able to say some of those kinds of things. But, yeah, I think that offensive line was what really carried that team. Uh, Susan says, think he's going to keep playing and be a vice presidential candidate. Uh, oh, man, I heard that rumor. That would be – that would make for some hilarious media, media stuff if Aaron Rodgers ended up running for vice president. Uh, I would – I would crack up at that. Uh, Josh says, mock, 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 mock a mania season. Oh, man, it is. Tis the season. So with that, guys, really appreciate you joining me on this March Madness episode of the Dynasty Lunch Break. We're going to be doing this each and every week. So mark it on your calendars now. Put it in your put it in your notebooks. Put it in your your calendar, your, you know, your Google, your Google, whatever. Just get it in there. So that way, you know, each and every week, hey, I've got a standing appointment from noon to one. I'm hanging out with Garrett Price on the Dynasty Lunch Break. So appreciate you guys. We'll be back next week. We've got some good things coming up on the Discord, too. Uh, nerd scores are coming out soon. So if you have not signed up to be part of the Nerd Herd, you are absolutely missing out. Sign up to be part of the Nerd Herd today. It's not crazy expensive, especially this time of year. So, so valuable. Appreciate